purity of God. Divine light that shines on the earth plane as the truth of God. This is the truth of who you truly are. The offering of love is your destiny. The offering of love is also your healing. In this divine schoolroom of love, it is the only purpose, the purpose of surrendering to the truth of love itself. and the surrendering of all that you have made to battle and to reject love. All that you have made to prove that a separate self is possible. All that you have made to prove that you're right. The journey of love. is the journey that everyone is here for. But the spark the spark of offering is in every beloved who has heard the call heard the call to walk the journey of love the journey of love is a journey of surrendering everything you thought you knew. Everything. There are no exceptions to this. There are no relationships that stand separate from this. There are no situations that stand separate from this. There are no circumstances that are gray Every moment is either offering love and embracing the truth of love with complete intention or every moment becomes the battleground and remains the battleground until you choose again. The battleground is familiar. The battleground is not always blatantly obvious. That would be too easy. So the battle shows up. In pain in sorrow, in the wanting to get from this world, to get and be right, to protect, to defend.
and to uphold the belief of scarcity. Greed is the friend of scarcity. The fear that love is limited. The fear that you have to do something. You personally need to do something to protect, to defend. And all of this is the deep surrender. The letting go, the relinquishment of the past, of the identity, to walk in this world, the song of love in your heart that is singing, I don't know who I am, and I don't know what anything is for. I'm here to learn. I'm here to remember. I'm here to be shown the way. And love always answers. Always. Step by step. With the willingness of honesty and the sincere sincere wanting to learn honesty, to not fool yourself in any way. With fantasies and imaginings and habits, letting it all go and trusting, trusting, trusting. Consciously choosing to trust that God is the universe of love, that God is the reality of your existence, that you are the light of God, but that the light of God does not battle ever. The light of God does not question love. The light of God does not attack in any way with judgments and opinions and condemnations. Honesty says, show me the way. Show me the way. Let me hear your voice of love in every moment. Let it be the song that sings in my heart and speaks to me all day. Let me speak only to the light of love. the call to love is the gift you bring to all of humanity your willingness to choose love no matter who is saying what no matter what is being perceived focused in devotion, focused in intention, serving, love. And as you 
walk this journey, the willingness to forgive yourself. For every mistaken thought and action that comes from thought and to begin again and to forgive yourself for the false identities that you have given to everyone and the willingness to truly see with the heart the light of love that radiates in every beloved and everything, every molecule of life. The call to love. In this moment, the willingness to breathe, the willingness to breathe deeply and fully with the intention of returning to this present moment. Willing to be here where love exists. And as you let go of the knowing, as you breathe and you allow that there is nothing to know here. There's no, no information to gather. There's no circumstances to figure out. There's no one, nobody to assess. There's no one to look at and think you know what their journey needs to look like. Every beloved is the light of God. Nothing else is true. Allow love as you breathe, as you allow and intend for yourself to be present here. To accept that there's no place else to be but here in this moment. Consciously surrendering the past and the future. No longer willing to live your life in the past, which is all that you think you know. And no longer willing to bring the past and throw it into the future to continue to experience what you think you know. Love is calling. Just be willing in every moment to listen. to drop into this exquisite silence of the heart and the mind, willing to open to the communion of love as you breathe, willing, willing, willing. and resting, resting in love. As you breathe, breathing deeply of surrendering the heart, surrendering the heart for it to be opened and joined in love. as you extend your heart in every moment the heart opens 
because the defenses are no longer wanted. Surrendering. Surrendering the identification of the past that thinks it's a body, limited, flawed, damaged, and able to die. The willingness to surrender all you thought you knew about the body, all that you thought you knew about the emotional body. Surrendering. Surrendering the emotional body into the hands of God and the willingness to allow the spirit of love to show you the way to compassion, kindness and charity, joy expressed all through the emotional body for it to be used only for love no longer willing for it to be used to affirm being a victim, to affirm separation, to affirm lack, no longer willing to serve the lies of separation. The heart says, yes, lead me. Lead me, lead me, I will follow. In every moment, this is the choice. The choice of freedom. The choice of peace. The choice of divine equality. Complete union. but having to ask in the everyday life, what do I want? As the habits, the addictions to separation are enticing, let your intention wake up to what you truly want and recognize it as peace. It is harmony. It is joy. It is the truth of who you are. It's returning home. But it must be chosen, moment to moment. And that is the place of trust. The free fall of love. There is no control in the spiritual journey. There is no containment of knowing in the spiritual journey. Just surrender. Step by step, moment by moment breathing and coming back to being here, present, in love, no longer willing to hide in a defense place of the past. Accepting love. Allow this prayer to fill your heart and your senses and your being with grace and the divine alchemy of love's healing as you accept what you truly want and what you're willing to join. I feel your tenderness, I feel your tenderness, I feel the tenderness of your ever-loving hand, 
I feel the tenderness. I feel your tenderness. I feel the tenderness from deep within. I feel your mercy, Lord. I feel your mercy, Lord. I feel the mercy, Lord, of your ever-loving hand. I feel your mercy, Lord. I feel the mercy, Lord. I feel the mercy, Lord deep within. I see your beauty, Lord. I see the beauty, Lord. I see the beauty, Lord, of your ever-loving hand. I see the beauty, Lord. I see the beauty, Lord. I see the beauty, Lord, from deep within. I sense your truth, O Lord. I sense your truth, O Lord. I sense your truth, O Lord, of your ever-loving hand. I sense your truth, O Lord. I sense your truth, O Lord. I sense the truth, O Lord, from deep within. Deep within. Deep within. The invitation is there. The invitation to go deep within and to recognize I can't have ideas. I can't have thoughts of separation. I can't have opinions and judgments and go deep within. They have to be left and surrendered and the willingness to go deep within and meet the divine within. Coming home to the comfort within, the light within, the beauty <coughs> within, the truth within. Everything is within. Offering love from the heart that has been within, that has embraced the divine within. Love is calling. Here I am, dear God, here I am, declaring the love within my heart, declaring the truth within my heart that I want to remember. Here I want to affirm, I want to live in the love of the Divine Mother. I am here forever to love, accepting nothing else. Here in the school of love, I'm here in deep gratitude, grateful for the journey, grateful that everything that I thought I knew was a lie and I can let it go. Grateful to be healed. I come and give thanks to all divine beings who serve love's remembering. 
all divine beings that are in the light of the Divine Mother. Forever I will praise and never to aggrandize myself. I am small with the size of love in this belief of separation. But in this light, in this remembering, I remember that I am a great love. I am the love and the light of God. To love together with all beloveds, all of us, moving together and praising God in the light of love. Here, within this power of love, we must give thanks, constantly remembering with gratitude all that is offered and all that can be received. In deep gratitude to the divine beings for the healing that we are receiving in every moment, the healing of love, all within the heart, all loving and giving thanks for the truth and the way home. Eu, eu aqui vou seguindo, declarando o amor dentro do meu coração. Eu aqui quero afirmar o amor de nossa mãe para sempre eu amar aqui. Na escola do amor é venho agradecer a todos seres divinos dentro da luz de nosso mãe para sempre vou louvar e nunca me agradecer. Sou pequeno do tamanho do amor para dentro desta luz. O grande amor é poder ser amar junto com os meus irmãos, todos nos seguindo juntos e o Deus poder louvar. Aqui, aqui dentro do poder, devemos agradecer a nosso pai, a nossa mãe, as curas que vamos recebendo dentro do coração. Amando e grandecendo. A school of love. A divine school of love. That's all that really is here in the truth of love. The willingness to learn the willingness to be shown the way, the willingness to have the light lead in every moment. As the heart consciously says yes, and it must consciously say yes, there is no rescue, and there is no victim to be rescued. Every <coughs> beloved has this divine choice every moment to remember love. <clears throat> if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love 
then I am only a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains and have not love, then I am nothing. And if I give all I possess to the poor, and if I give my body to be burned and have not love, then I am of no use for anything. The truth of love is the journey. The remembering of love is the journey. Nothing else has any purpose. God is love. Love is God. The truth of your divine existence is love. And in love, there is truly nothing to do. I must love. I must love with every breath. I must love. I must love. Because that is the truth of being. I must accept love as all that there is. Love is harmony. Love is peace. Love is joy. The divine state of the true existence. And the journey there is a journey that is love itself also. The journey of love is love. When you join and you allow and you surrender, that is love. When you resist, when you retaliate, when you think you know, there's just no love there. It's just empty, nothing. Nothing of value, nothing <coughs> to offer, nothing. Nothing. Illusion is nothing. To be devoted to illusion means nothing and is nothing. Using the journey for love is the only true purpose to learn to love. Unnameable God, I feel you with me in every moment. You are my food, my drink, my sunlight, and the air I breathe. You are the ground I have built on and the beauty that rejoices my heart. I give thanks to you at all times for lifting me from this belief in confusion, for teaching me the lies of the dark and showing me the path of life. I have come to the center of the universe and I rest in your perfect love. In your presence there is a fullness of joy and blessedness eternal. Let this prayer sing in your heart. Let this lead you constantly. That as you choose that God is your food and your water and the air that you breathe, you're letting go of knowing. You're letting go of a false identity 
that has no purpose. And you begin to remember. The light begins to dawn in your heart. And you begin to live. Truly live. How do I listen? How do I listen to others? As if everyone were my master speaking to me. Speaking to me his cherished last words. This is love. This is the opening to love. Because until you're willing to see the light in everyone and in everything, you can't know love. It's not possible. It's not possible to know love, to be aware of love without being aware of the light and the love that is everyone and everything. It is not possible. Everyone and everything is one with you. And the journey, the journey of love is to recognize the union of this love. The ego, the belief of separation, has produced within you an idea that says everyone and everything is a separate self. I see it in how they look, in how they behave, in what they do. None of this is true. Every beloved is you. And every assessment, every opinion, every judgment of anyone or anything that is different just affirms separation again and again and again. Every irritation, every upset comes from the belief that there is someone separate from you, that they are what you think they are. But they're not anything of what you think they are. Nothing of what you think they are. There is only one. <coughs> that coming home is coming home to the truth of love's union. The truth of love's oneness. Every moment you have the opportunity of seeing God, of seeing the divine, to see past what you made of everyone else, because why do you, why do you think that there are so many opinions in the world about everyone else. It's the distraction. And why is it that everyone can have a million different opinions about the same beloved? 
everyone having their own view of what they think they know. The sheep of the ego. Everyone having their opinion. But every single opinion is coming from the past of your identity. It has no other place to come from. And every opinion that you have of anyone is only what you believe about yourself, nothing else. When you believe someone is dishonest, it is because you are not honest. When you believe that someone else is hurtful to you, it is because you believe in the power of hurting of attacking. That's all that you're seeing. When you believe you are seeing bad behavior in someone else, this is your belief in your past and your guilt of what you perceive to be your be bad behavior. Is it true? No, but it's not true of the beloved either. To, to stop the game of blame, it's to heal here in the heart that all perceptions on the outside are reflections of what you believe about yourself that you are trying to get away from, that you don't want to have honesty about, that these are beliefs about yourself. It doesn't matter where you put the beliefs. You can put the beliefs on a murderer. You can put the beliefs on someone who robs banks. You can put the beliefs on someone who doesn't matter what. If you can put the beliefs on someone who is uh, becoming successful in the world and you're jealous of their success. You're jealous of what they have. You can look at others and say, oh, I judge that. <coughs> I judge that because I don't want to go within. I don't want to go within because I'm afraid of what I'll find. Because I have run from the self-hatred. I have run from the self-condemnation of separation. But the problem is not out there. The belief is in here. The belief is in the mind that believes it is separate from God and believes that it knows and that the past is your road map. How do I listen? How do I listen? How do I listen to others? Judging? Do I hear? Do I see in others? Do I listen to others by judging what they're saying as how it affects me because of the narcissism within that says this is all about me? It always comes back. Do I listen? with criticism? Do I listen with judgment? Or do I listen with my heart? My heart. And listen as if I was listening to the Master, accepting the light of God that is within everyone.
do I go past the fears that I may see outside and recognize the beloved because that's where my focus has to be on the light that is really there <coughs> the relationship to grievances is an addiction of the world it's no different than a heroin addiction except that it's more pervasive more acute more entrenched <coughs> Grievances are built on the past and used as a weapon to justify battle, to justify that you, your grievances are legitimate, that your past is legitimate that your identity of separation is legitimate. Every time you affirm the legitimacy of your grievances, you are, you are affirming the legitimacy of your identity. That's all that's going on. You can't hold grievances and remember the truth of who you are. It is not possible. It's not possible. This is a place of honesty. This is not a place of condemnation. This is a place of honesty from within because the only choosing is within. All the teachings, all of the, all of the divine gifts that are given to help you remember everything, all the truths that are there to lighten your heart and break through all of the barriers that you've made against love. All of those teachings can't help you unless you actually live them. It's just not possible. Grievances are accepted in this world as natural, completely natural. Grievances are not just overt attacks. They are every little element of gossip. When you speak about someone to someone, I want to share this with you. I want to talk about this other beloved as if I know them. I'm going to share this with you. I want to tell you what they're doing. I want to tell you about their life. I want to tell you what they should do. I want to tell you. There's no love there. And there cannot be any love there. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself into thinking that this is helpful by using the word helpful. It isn't. It has no love. It has self-aggrandizement in it and it has self-purpose in it of feeling more powerful because you think you know something about somebody else and you're avoiding going within and remembering and meeting the divine within. All of this is just avoidance. Is it tempting? Yes, it's very tempting. It's as, it's as tempting as any addiction, absolutely. But it is a grievance. Every time you speak the name of someone who is not there, it is a grievance. Let me tell you something I know about somebody else. You don't know anything. This is a journey of humility. This is a journey of learning humility. 
and of trusting that the need to be in charge or in control or to believe that the feeling of power is authentic is a ruse that keeps you from healing. And it keeps you from healing because you put it into a framework that says, no, this is, this is acceptable. This is acceptable to talk about somebody else. I'm saying this with concern. I'm saying this with love. I'm saying this with, with wanting to help them. No. No. It isn't. This is where the honesty comes in. The honesty of what am I really offering? What is my intention? To know thyself, to know your true self, is to shine the light on all the intentions of what you are there for. What is my intention? Am I, here, am I here in this really offering love? Or what am I trying to get? Avoidance? Feeling more powerful? Feeling like I know something? All of it is a ruse that has no, no value and no purpose. It is the journey. It's not about condemnation, but it's it's actually learning to stop condemning. To stop condemning through the name of fear. Through the low-grade fear that runs self-protection. Trying to self-protect by commiserating with others about someone else or something else or what you think you know. It's totally fabricated in the mind to delay remembering of love. That's all that it is. To accept that you have invented the world that you see. You invented it. And then to be angry at the world that you see is the wrong direction. You invented the world you see. It came from your own mind. It came from your beliefs of separation, your past. That's the world that you see. Everything in the spiritual journey, everything, once you say yes to the spiritual journey, everything becomes the schoolroom. Everything becomes the opportunity of recognizing I invented the world that I see, and everything that I see is giving me the opportunity of self-healing within, not of condemning or judging or expecting something from somebody outside or trying to protect myself from somebody outside because I don't want to be used. I don't want to be betrayed. I don't want to be taken advantage of. You've invented the world, you see. If you see through the lens of someone taking advantage of you, it is because you believe that you take advantage of yourself and you don't follow the truth of love and offer yourself love and come home. If you are concerned and worried about others' behaviors, it is because you don't want to check your own. That's all that's going on. No one has sinned. No one has done anything that has changed the truth of love. No one has change the truth of who they are. You can't. But to accept that is to drop all the judgments, all the assessments, all the opinions that are running all the time. And that 
hold you prisoner in a false state of limbo because the honesty isn't there. What am I what am I believing in? What am I what am I believing in in every moment? What am I choosing in every moment? Is this for peace? In the simplicity of love, when Jesus brought to me the teaching to ask the question in every situation, in every moment, to ask the question, am I experiencing peace? Mm -hmm. Am I experiencing joy? Am I experiencing harmony? If I'm not, I've made something up. It's not of God. Whatever I'm experiencing has nothing to do with the truth of God, and I've made something up, and I have to choose again. How simple is the way of love? To simply have this simple practice of honesty, it's not of God. And if it's not of God, it's not of love. And if it's not of God, it's completely fabricated from your own mind, from your past. That's all that you're gleaning from. There is no other betraying you. There is no other to defend against. There is no other to take advantage of you. There is no other that can treat you unfairly. It is not possible. Beware of the temptation of seeing yourself as unfairly treated. Why is this a teaching that is a universal teaching? Because everyone, everyone, believes in their perception that they're being unfairly treated. Everyone is looking through their physical eyes, which belong to the ego, and looking to see who is treating them unfairly. Checking and rechecking each word, each nuance, each situation to see if they are being unfairly treated because you believe you can be because you believe you can be unfairly treated. You're the light of God. To accept that you are the light of God is to accept that you cannot be unfairly treated. Zip, never. It's not possible. To deny that you can be unfairly treated, that you can be betrayed, that you can be taken advantage of, it's all the same that you can be hurt. What do you believe can hurt you? Your feelings? Your feelings come from the mind. And the mind is the ego's until you return it back to God. And the journey is to recognize this cannot be. It's not possible. And I must make the choice. No one else can make the choice. I can call on help. Yes, all, please call on help. Please help me, give me strength. Give me strength to walk this journey. Oh my Father, give me strength. Give me the courage to walk the path that the Masters walked. Give me that courage. I'm, but I'm willing, I am willing I have to choose. I have to choose to accept the divine teachings and refuse the insanity of my mind that lives in the past. Every reaction, every upset, every, not some, every reaction, every upset comes from the past. 
That's why it's never what you think it is. You are never upset for the reasons that you think. Let's say you have a piece of pie in the refrigerator and you go into the refrigerator and somebody's taking your piece of pie and instantly you are in reaction. Instantly you are upset. Where did that come from? It isn't about the pie. It's because you feel you're unfairly treated and this unfair treatment is added to all the other unfair treatments that you believe are real from your past. Your identity believes in being unfairly treated because it believes that being unfairly treated is authentic. And it will continue to see through that lens until you say no more. When you open that refrigerator door and you see that the pie is gone, you have a choice. You have a choice in that moment. Does that seem trivial? That choice is the same choice as all the choice between illusion and love. To be happy that someone received the blessings of that piece of pie and that when they enjoyed that piece of pie you were blessed in that enjoyment is the, the acceptance first that you're one with everybody and secondly that no one can treat you unfairly and do anything to you and it also is that when there's only one and one beloved is enjoying a blessing, everyone is available to that blessing of that enjoyment. When someone else eats that piece of pie, you are eating that piece of pie. To open to that truth is to heal the illusion of separation. That piece of pie can hold the entire universe of truth for you. But your reaction, your decision in the moment, unconsciously says, no, I choose battle. I choose to add to the list of my beliefs of being unfairly treated. And then I want the next beloved to fix it. But it can't be fixed. It can't be fixed through anyone outside. No amount of anything from the outside can fix it. It has to come from within that says, I cannot be unfairly treated. It's not, it's not possible. And I draw the line. And every time this comes because the ego, ego will, will be presenting the opportunity, the opportunity to, see to see yourself as a victim, victim and, be and be unfairly treated. And you, and you have, have to see yourself, see yourself as a victim to believe, to believe that you can be unfairly treated. treated. You, have, you have to. You can't, you separate, can't separate the two. two. You can't say, oh, I'm unfairly, I'm treated, unfairly treated, treated, but I don't see myself, see myself as a victim. No, it's no, not it's possible. To believe that you are unfairly treated, treated is, is to believe, to believe that, you're that you're a victim. That something, that something is, ha is happening to you, you rather, rather than you have you the have power, power of love within, love within you, you and, and that you're not, you're not the effect, effect of any, any of this other side of you except for your own, only your own, own, own mind. You, you invent invented the world that you see. And so, and so in that, in that acceptance, acceptance that you invented, invented the world that you, that you see and feel and, feel and experience, and experience. When, you when you accept that, that's when the healing, healing really, really begins. begins. But it has, but to, it be has to be held sacredly, sacredly and firmly. 
I invent the world that I see, and if I want to see the truth of love, I have to change my mind. I have to give my perceptions to the truth of love, and I have to surrender what I think I know. And want to see it differently. I want to see this through the truth of peace. I want to see it through my heart. I want to see in the light. I am never at the effect of something outside. Never. To hold the past against everyone and everything, which is what it is when you invent the world that you see, you hold your past against everyone and everything. Again, it's not a condemnation, but it's a realization that unless you recognize that this is where all the pain comes from and the perception of enemies, and every time you have an opinion about someone else or a reaction to someone else as not being on board the right way, you make them your enemy. They aren't really your enemy, but you hold them as your enemy. You hold them as your enemy, and this is the honesty. The honesty is, I can't heal unless I see it honestly and not cover it up in a acceptable reasoning that I make up. How do I listen? How do I listen to others? as if everyone were my master? Am I willing to go there? Am I willing to open my heart and follow the calling to love? In my defenselessness, my safety lies. This is being undefended. To hear and listen to every beloved as the light that they are, to go past the words, to go past what you think you know, and to embrace the blessing of being with every beloved. Not in the way you think it should look, not in the way you think they should behave. Work on your own thoughts. Come back to the source so of letting go of what you think you know because that's where the healing is. When you're disturbed by something that you believe is outside, you're not. You're disturbed by your own mind. You invented the world you see. Every disturbance is coming from your own mind. It's not coming from someplace else. And the game of believing that it does, and the game of, of staying in reaction and upset for the sake of being right and protected, does not take that leap of faith that says, God has told me that in my defenselessness, my safety lies. I have to accept this if I want to remember. I won't remember without letting go of the defenses that I've made to protect and hold myself separate because I believe I can be betrayed, because I believe I can be unfairly treated, because I believe I know my own best interests. You cannot perceive your own best interests, hands down, period. It's not possible. Everything that you consider to be your own best interest is coming from the belief of separation that says, I am without. I am lacking. So you think your own best interest is um, a new car? Where did that come from? 
you think your own best interest is saying something that has no no love in it because it protects and it defends because you want to be right it's all you don't you don't perceive your own best interest but the beauty is is that god does spirit of love perceives your best interests the spirit of love knows the direction that would be most helpful and to guide you into the deeper surrender into the deeper awareness of truth and love but if you're busy believing you know your own best interests and that you are unfairly treated or whatever it is you're not available and then you can be upset that the journey is taking so long but it can be you can be healed in a second. Absolutely. There's nothing. But what do we do? We don't heal in a second for the most part because we're resistant. We're constantly resistant and believing our own ideas, our own thoughts, our own reactions, and forgetting that there is a light that is leading us that's what I had to remember. That's what I had to learn. Day in and day out, I would hear the voice of Jose saying to me, it is not your healing that is difficult. The healing that you are receiving is not difficult. It is your resistance to it that causes all the grief. Your resistance of wanting to be right. Your resistance of wanting to be in charge when there's nothing to be in charge of. There's nothing to control, there's nothing to defend. Do you, do you understand that? Absolutely not. Everything in you primed yourself to believe that you need defending. And what's at the basis of that? The basis of that is you believe that you're a body and that you've hated this body and yet you've been terribly afraid of it being hurt. That includes the emotional body. You've believed your past as real, as accurate. You're not a body. To accept that is the beginning of freedom also because you are eternal. You're not this. This body is going to fall away. This body is not only temporary, but totally imperfect. Totally. Not to be counted on for happiness, for, for truth, for connection even. No. The body is an inanimate object. The spirit that is housed in this body is the divine truth of who you are, the spirit. Now, what the mind wants to say is, well, spirit isn't, isn't as, as solid as the body, so it must not be as good. You have no clue of the power and the strength and the beauty and the perfection of divine spirit. You don't know because you haven't come home yet. You haven't embraced this divine spirit yet. But to begin to meet the divine within is to meet this divine spirit. And this spirit is not an individualized spirit. It's not a personality. It's not an identity. It is the light of God that can shape change and move and, and open and, and travel and has no limitations. How can you possibly embrace that if you're believing in this form? 
and holding it as so important. You're giving all of your attention and your your credence to an object that has no value. Even in the scientific world, there's a realization that when when the spirit leaves the body, the body is worth about 89 cents <laughs> of material. Well, that's about what it's worth now. To love it in the sense of the recognition that it is serving love's remembering. It is the vehicle that can express love that you are offering. It is here to be transformed into a temporary instrument that can comfort, that can bless, and that can offer love. Not by its nature, but through its expression. But that's all it's worth. The, the refusal to invest in the body identity <coughs> is essential to refuse. Not to, not to hate it, because there's enough of that already. That has to be healed too, to stop hating the body as, a, as an identity of who you are. It's not about letting pain be real and suffering be real so that it proves that you are worthless and that you deserve punishment. You don't deserve punishment. No one does. There's no punishment in God. There's no punishment except self-made. Through every thought that you have of attack, through every thought that you have of fear, you are attacking yourself. And there's no love there. <coughs> Let the Holy Spirit teach you the, the true purpose of the body. Let the Holy Spirit show you the way how to use this vehicle as the flute of love that the wisdom of the divine can move through. Let your spirit become Let your spirit open. Let your spirit be seen. That's the light within you. That's your heart being opened. When your heart is open, your spirit is free. That is the spirit, is your heart. And you open your heart undefended and offer love without <coughs> conditions. No conditions. Love can't have conditions. Oh, I'll give you love if uh, you do these things for me. I'll give you love if you treat me well. I'll give you love if you... That's not love. That's a game. It's a game of battle. Love is given unconditionally. Let me give you everything. Let me give you everything. It's here. I give it freely. Give it. That's... That's the growth of love. <clears throat> love is not conditional ever. Love with conditions is not love at all. Not at all. To get something from someone else means nothing. Nothing. Everything is already within you. How can you find the light of God within you when you are wanting to get from others because you believe they have something that you don't have and they owe you 
They owe you because of the past. I heard a teacher say once that believing that anyone owes you something is like going to buy a car and expecting this new car to pay you back for all the lemons that you got in the past. I want you to give me this car for free because I got screwed on all these other cars. That's the insanity of the mind. The insanity of the mind says, I'm owed because I believe I'm without. No one has betrayed you. No one, no one can treat you unfairly. No one can do anything to you. The only place of pain and suffering is coming from your mind. It's coming from your belief of separation. It's not coming from outside. It's like standing at the window in a haunted house and looking out to make sure nobody shows up when they're already inside. It's your mind. Your mind is where the problem is. Your mind is where the healing is called to be. That's the only place that you can heal. When you change your mind, when you refuse to accept the lies that you've accepted in the past of separation, it, you can't help but open the heart because there's nothing in your mind that is saying, be cautious anymore. It's removed, it's gone because you surrendered it into the hands of God. You let it go. You don't want it anymore. I don't want it. Once you don't want it, the Holy Spirit answers. The Holy Spirit says, I'll gladly pull it out and it's gone because it was never true to begin with. It was never real and it never had any validity or value. Nothing. When you forget if you forget, if you forget the truth of love and you get caught in your old identity, in your beliefs, in your games that you play, what is the most helpful element? The most helpful element is being able to be honest and say, I'm caught in my own mind beliefs. I'm caught. I have to pray to let this go because I'm believing in distortion. Not The answer is not, I'm right and you're wrong. This is right, this is right, I'm right. That's much more difficult to heal from than the honesty of saying, I'm caught in my old beliefs of separation. I'm caught in my habit of believing that something is happening. I want this to be healed. And when you want it to be healed, it will be healed. All, all love is waiting for, all the spirit of love is waiting for is your yes. That's, that's, your, that's your contribution. Without your yes, the Holy Spirit cannot help you. It's not possible. You have free will. When you have free will, you're not a puppet. You're not going to be rescued because you were so badly treated in the past. And this is all part of the fantasy. The fantasy of the ego is, I was unfairly treated in the past, and now I want to be rescued because this was true. No, the healing is in the recognition that wasn't true. I have always been the light of God. Just because I made up a convincing identity doesn't make it true. 
have to I have to want to <coughs> surrender it because I made it up. God didn't do it. I I made it up. It's not a sin. It's just a place of mistaken identity where I can't experience the truth of love. Just caught in a dream that has no value. And I must forgive myself for that mistaken identity. I must forgive myself for making all the mistaken identities that I've made of everyone and everything. You know, in the, in the journey of healing from addiction, there is a relationship with making amends. Making amends in the spiritual journey is about forgiveness, the forgiveness of the mistaken identity. To bring each beloved home into your heart and to accept them as the light of God. To refuse to hold them any longer in your identity of them and in your perception that you were unfairly treated. No. I can't heal without everyone coming home into my heart. I can't because then the story remains true for me. If I refuse them, if I say no, that's too dangerous, I can't, I, I'm not trusting in God, I'm not trusting in the calling to invite them all home, to reunite with every beloved as the light of God. That's the healing of humanity. That's the healing of every heart back into the one heart for all eternity, free. I am not a body, I am free. I'm still as God created me. It's a deep entering, a deep entering into the truth of light. Take me, take me dear Lord, take me, take me God, take me into this truth so that I can recognize the truth and open to it. Help me. Help me in every moment. All of the love, all of the prayers are there all the time for you. But they can't compete with your opinions and your assessments and your judgments. When you have assessments and judgments and think you know something and have reactions to what you think is happening, that's what you choose. At any moment, you can choose to stop and begin again and choose peace but you have to choose it no one can do that for you no one can convince you even pull you it's not possible the power of finding the strength within of recognizing I am not weak but strong, I am not helpless but all-powerful, and accepting this truth, accepting it within, is love. That is your strength. It's your willingness to remember love. The willingness to accept that I am not weak but strong in the truth of love. I am not strong in the belief of judgment. I am not strong in the belief of being unfairly treated. I am weak. I am believing in weakness. I am believing in victimhood. I am believing in separation. I am believing in being a body. There is no love there. Love is in the divine union. Love is in the harmony that comes from your own mind. That's where the healing is. It isn't in making sure that everybody else is doing what they need to be doing. I remember a master saying, mind your own business because that's all the business that there is. Is your own business of your own mind. That's the healing of humanity not in 
getting everybody else to behave correctly and do what you think is supposed to be done or how you want it to be. That's just distraction. It's just a ruse. It's just a game that the ego likes to play called spiritual ego. There's no healing there. The healing is in the mind. And the beauty of that is that if it's in your mind, you can heal. If it's outside, you can't heal. Then the, the world is your enemy for the next billion years. The healing is within. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. How do I listen? How do I see? The willingness to see every beloved as the light of God and nothing else. Innocent and free. Whole and complete. 